Hamilton has been the star of playoff pass. It's now in his hands and his destiny! And he's done it! These kids have done it again! Youngest squad in the league and the champions in the land. And the Cavalier, they now have their third star on their chest. Celebrations for Cavalier, who captured the rare nephew to make a Premier League title on Sunday with a 4 3 penalty shootout win against Mount Pleasant at the National Stadium in Kingston. The win was sweet revenge for Cavalier, who lost 2-1 in the 2023 final to the St Anne-based team. It meant a third top-flight title for the Kingston-based side, which also won in 1981 and 2021. Mount Pleasant took the lead in the 65th minute through a Devontae Campbell strike, but the response was instant from a resilient Cavalier outfit, who equalised just two minutes later through Richard King. Then in the penalty shootout, Mount Pleasant again took the early advantage going 2-0 up. But Cavalier once again responded as goalkeeper Vino Barclay denied Ladale Ritchie and Romeo Guthrie to set the platform for substitute Nicholas Hamilton to score the winning penalty. But let's now hear from both coaches Cavalier's Rudolf Speed and Mount Pleasant's Theodore Whitmore. Yeah, disappointed. I think if we kept the, the, the score line a bit longer, then we would have come away victorious. But um, not to take anyway, it, it, it was a tactical game from both teams this afternoon. After it go down to penalty kick, it, it would be anybody game. And as I said, Cavalier went on and win it. And we must say congrats to the Cavalier yeah, team. Yeah, but we were never perturbed. Um, the truth is, we have been. This is our third final um, in four years. This is our sixth semi-final in six years. So. There's no fluke to it. It was always we're building, we're building, we're building, going quietly about our business. And um, when the time comes, we just perform. All right, so with us to review the final is our in-house football analyst, Leger Williams, and of course, one of our football commentators, Chris Taylor. Good afternoon. I'll start with Chris, seeing that it's it's, you know, ever so often that you grace us in studio. <laughs> so let's start, Chris, by, of course, touching on what Tapper said in that soundbite. He spoke about the game, you know, being a tactical one. And, of course, you know, being disappointed that his team did not close this one out. Yeah, penalty shootout is always a lottery. Um, it could go either way. I don't think he could be greatly disappointed in terms of how the team played right throughout the right throughout the 120 minutes. I thought, yes, very tactical game, very tight, very even. I thought Cavalier played a better first half, Mount Pleasant played a better second half, had their half opportunities and so on that they should have probably um, you know, made more of. But once it, come down to the, once it comes down to the penalties, it could have gone either way. Yeah. Lish, when you realised that the game was going into penalties, what was going through your mind? Well, I always say, you know, I, I, I depend on trends. And although so what was the trend saying in your brain at that time? Well, the, 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 trend, the trend was saying that the last team to win a Jamaica Premier League title on penalties was Cavalier. Okay. So I, I'm sure that would have instilled them with a lot of confidence. And uh, I, I was a bit nervous, not because I'm a supporter of Mount Pleasant or Cavalier, but because I know what would happen and then what would happen when I come on this set on the following <laughs> day and have to sit beside my dear friend, Ricardo Chambers and he rubs it in <laughs> that I couldn't get my prediction right this time on the rare occasion. But, you know, that's football. It was a really good game, as Chris said, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I, or the penalty shootout. Oh, to be honest, I don't know why the Jay would think that I would come at him on a day like this. Um, I really just wanted to know if the match played out in the way that you expected it to. Um, and by the way, Harborview, one um, on penalties. Yeah, one on penalties. Did beat Don Beholden after Cavalier won on penalties. But it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to get an understanding if the way this one played out is how you expected it to. From the Cavalier side, yes. From the Mount Pleasant side, no. Uh, how the team set up, I spoke about it in the keys to the game before the game about how, what Mount Pleasant would try to do in terms of what they would try to do, their build up, 
and how they would try to sustain pressure. So they made some changes in their midfield. You saw Shandy James come in alongside Demario Phillips and also Ramon Howell. Those are all very technical players who like to keep the ball secure and, you know, just progress it. They didn't really get a chance to progress it well enough because of Cavalier shape, which I'll get onto. But that was the, the idea in thought of Mount Pleasant and they executed it relatively well, but the ball progression wasn't there at times. I saw at many times during the second half when I was watching on for instance, Sule Makala would invert, leaving the space for the ball to be progressed either through the lines into midfield or directly to Devontae Campbell, and the pass just wasn't taken on. I'm not quite sure if that was instruction or just Mount Pleasant not really trying to play those risky passes or be brave enough to play those risky passes, but I think that was a part of why they weren't able to sustain pressure and be as dominant as they would like to be. But I think Cavalier have to take a massive part of that as well because I think they were really good whether they were pressing high, which I didn't do for the entirety of the first half, which I expected. They also sat off in a really aggressive mid-block, allowed more players to have the ball in their defence and when it came into any type of zone where Cavalier wanted to attack, they did that really well and Cavalier's transitional play, especially offensively, was fantastic, whether it be one of the central midfielders or the defenders getting the balls over the top and those really fast attackers going at that slowish Mount Pleasant backline which made a lot of changes. I think Cavalier's game plan and Mount Pleasant game plan were there to see, but I think Cavalier executed better. Yeah. Is that how you saw it, Chris? Somewhat. <laughs> um, I, I actually thought that Mount Pleasant, if you look at the possession stats, Mount Pleasant had 58% of the possession in the first half. This was what was expected. Mount Pleasant would enjoy majority of the possession. In the end, they actually increased that. I think at the end they had about 61 or 62%. The problem with Mount Pleasant for me, especially in that first half, where they were too slow in moving the ball forward. And I think bringing Demario Phillips into the lineup, yes, he's a good passer, yes, he's a good ball handler, but he does slow down the play a bit. And I thought that's what they were guilty of. So there was no opportunity for... How is that different from what we see from them consistently throughout the regular season? I think some of the times they have brought in, for example, Tevin Shaw in some of the other games. I think he plays with a bit more pace. Um, Mount Pleasant were concerned with the wide players of Cavalier in Ainsworth, Atkinson and so on. So hence, McCullough didn't get to overlap as much as he likes. Didn't get yeah. to get into the opposition's half. So, a lot of the possession for Mount Pleasant were deep, was deep in their own half. They didn't really get forward that much. Um, and then they had, made, they had a couple of changes, as Lige said. Two forced changes in their defence line, yeah. with Cummins being out because of cards, and well, Dyer out as well because of a red card. So, still thought that they adjusted well defensively, but I think going forward they were a bit too slow. Um, Cavalier did their homework, they realised that the pace and openness of the wide areas, especially with Devante Campbell, would have been dangerous. As soon as he got the ball in the first half, he was forced to play with his back to goal. Yeah. Not how he would like to play. Um, he got a lot more space in the second half and it showed. He scored and he had another shot that he probably should have done better as well. So, in the second half, when it started, obviously the team talk from Ferguson and, and Whitmore and company worked because their play had a lot more pace behind it and I think that was the key. Yeah. One quick one because I thought Lijay made a, a pretty good point when he spoke about um, Mount Pleasant probably not wanting to take certain risks. Uh, do you think they were too cautious at times especially when they were moving forward? No, no. I don't think they were too cautious. I just think as I said in terms of how they're playing. At first half Cavalier Cavalier started the first half on the front foot. They were very aggressive in the first 10 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Jamar Calvin had two really good opportunities. One, both well saved by Shaquan Davis. Um, but as you could see in the at the start of the second half, Mount Pleasant came with the same energy that Cavalier showed in the first half. So yeah. I don't think it's a case that they were overly cautious. I just thought they probably needed to increase the tempo of their midfield play. A lot of the passes were too lateral and too many passes back instead of looking to go forward. And but, but Cavalier did a good job of, of being getting cautious, narrow. Though? Isn't that part of being cautious, almost being afraid to try and um, penetrate the defence maybe for fear of losing the football too often? 
Well, or lack of options. I mean, okay. if, if you have the ball in the midfield and you're not seeing the runs or you're seeing that the, the spaces are closed, then you're forced to play lateral passes. And because they were playing so slow, what it meant was that Cavalier could regroup. And as Liger said, that is Cavalier style. Cavalier have no problem sitting back, absorbing pressure, not having majority of the possession, and then look to score on the counter with their wide players with the pace. Uh -huh. And that was their style of play, and, and that's their system. Yeah, and Cavalier, you know, we heard it in Donald's commentary, the youngest team in the entire JPL competition. And of course, you know, putting up that sort of fight. So this one is for Lish. How much credit <laughs> goes to coach Rudolf Speed and how he was able to get these younger players to, of course, understand the assignment and keep with what he expected of them? Well, all the credit. You guys know how I feel about coaches from day one. They're the most important facet of football, in my opinion. Yes, you have very talented young players and yes, these players all have a big say on the pitch and if you ask him, he won't think that he will take all the credit because, you know, that's just how coaches are a lot of the time. They just try to be really are you sure? modest. Well, most coaches, okay. most, most really good coaches tend to be pretty modest. So I think, I think he wouldn't say this, but... It's all up to him. How Calculated he, ego. Are you sure he wouldn't <laughs> say this? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm very sure. He, okay. even, even during the, the trophy raising celebration, he opted to not be on the stage with his players. He's one of those coaches. So I, I think that in, in terms of Rudolf speed, and he profiles his players really well and he sets them up. The, the most a coach can do is set up his team to succeed. Yeah. Yeah. And he does that extremely well by placing all of his players in their optimal position. Someone like Adrian Reed Jr. playing him when he was younger as an outside centre back to protect him from playing in the central areas. Now that he's bigger, more experienced, he started as a central defensive midfielder in a JPL final at 18. So just things like that to place players in the right positions for them to succeed, it's all down to the coach in my opinion. Yeah. And from apart from when Nicholas Hamilton came on to kick the penalty, the eldest person on the field for Cavalier was Gadiel Irving at 25. So it just shows 18 to 25, that's the range. And Nicholas Hamilton is 28 years old, so right. and he the kicked oldest the by three years. Yeah. Right, so it just shows the, the, the youthfulness of that team. Um, but yeah, I, I think Rudolf Speed enjoys being understated. I mean, I don't think there's anything um, lacking in terms of his confidence or how he feels about his system or the ability to win. But I, I think he doesn't mind being under the radar. I think he thinks it works well for his team. And the fact that he's coming there, not necessarily the favourites and people not necessarily making a big hoo-ha, probably works in his favour as well and he's loved that. Yeah, and compare his style now to Tapper because, you know, I saw Tapper in the tunnel. Um, I think it was at half time. You know, very, very quiet as well. Um, he only speaks when he's asked a question. <laughs> I get that from him. But y'all are around the football a lot more. So maybe would have a different impression. Um, compare Rudolf Speed um, to Tapa and how he went about his business. No, Theodore tends to be reserved as well. You, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, doesn't really say much unless you ask him. Um, however, a lot going on within the brain, you can tell. Um, ball possession team is, is, is what Mount Pleasant are. Um, and I think you realise it would have been a tough match coming into this one. Um, if you look at the results throughout the season, both teams won a match each. Yeah. Last year they shared all three results. Yeah. Two, a win each and a draw. So he, both coaches knew, and you heard it in the pre-match interviews, that they knew this was going to be a tough one. They knew that this one could go either way. Um, in the in the post-match interview as well, he gave major credit to Cavalier and he said that, look, this one was going to be a tough one. Yeah. It went to the penalty shootout. It could have gone either way. Um, no team more deserving than the other. So, Yeah. Um, I want you guys, and I'll start with Lejay, to compare this year's final with last year's final because a lot of what I was hearing heading into this is that both teams are better than they were a year ago. Did that show itself in last night's game? Um, in terms of a tactical execution, I think yes. Mm -hmm. I think that there were possibly better players on show. Maybe there wasn't any Trevante Stewart who everyone was looking forward to seeing or Colin Anderson, the two top scorers in the league, going back and forth against each other. Maybe it wasn't like that. But even 
I, I think especially in the midfield battle, how the midfields were set up, how they were executed, how limited the spaces were in between the lines for both teams. The things that I look on to determine whether a football game is good or not, it had that in spades for me. So I definitely think it was a better game, a more exciting game. It had chances as well. It, it probably could have been more goals, should have been more goals. So I do think it was a better game than last year, but last year's game was a whole as well. Chris, 10 seconds. Interesting. I, I think that both squads have kept and retained a lot of their players that were there last year. So one year more experienced, um, being on this stage before both of these persons, that would have helped their level. Yeah. Um, if they are a better team, I, I would say they are more experienced. Um, I, 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 I look at last year, last year had a, lot, had a couple of really good moments. If you look at Sule Makala's goals, it was a good moment, good, yeah. good, good. That Richard King goal was a really good goal though. We, we see opportunities like that being spanked over the crossbar quite a lot. Um, and as a centre-back as well. Or yeah. wide and as a centre-back. That was a, a, a really, really good goal and especially when your team is behind that's quality. That's a quality strike and, for me. And not only there, you, you, you want to respond right away. That's the ideal time. I mean, yeah. you, you concede it in the 65th minute and to respond two minutes later. Excellent. So there's not a great shift of momentum. Yeah. Um, you get things right back to where they were. Um, yeah, yeah. worked in yeah. their favor. We're out of time, but quickly before we go, don't want to put you guys too much on the spot. Um, but did the additional markings on the field take anything away from the game? Maybe just visually. <laughs> yeah, just just visually. It didn't, it didn't impact me too much, but I wasn't seeing it like this on TV. Yeah. Because Chris was higher than I was. I was in the bleachers, you know, chilling out with the fans. We were in the bleachers as well, by the way. No, you were high. You were high up. I, I was lower down, mingling. <laughs> yes, everybody, I was everybody. mingling so, too. So there on television, you can see the additional markings because it's not um, aesthetic. There were, yeah, yeah. There, there was a corporate sports day the previous day. That was the Saturday, and uh, those markings were to aid in the enjoyment of those individuals who took part in the corporate sports day and by the way we're going to be chatting more about that um, in tomorrow's show because okay. mariah it is a very very important issue and we'll be dealing with it in depth tomorrow yes yeah, so before Lish go i just want to tell you sorry about what happened on the weekend with your team <laughs> i'm still happy that you made it to work but and well won. No, no, no. Why no. would you do that? To and I have man. to say to you, yeah. I'll miss Jurgen Klopp. Oh. But you still yeah, came we'll with your shirt well. proudly. No. No, why would you do that to you know, you know, you know, He has to go, though. Well. Lige is here to you terrify know. that we somebody to is going to do that. I, I, of all I, I, persons, I, 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 I'm, he even has on a, a light blue shirt. I'm, I'm, I get the last say. We're out of time. I'm never terrified. I'm never terrified. Producer says we go to a break. I get the last say.